Call the meeting to order of the Waverly Select Board on February 14th, 2018. Our first uh, agenda item, approval of minutes of January 31st. Motion. Second. Any comments, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Yeah. Okay. Any exciting comments from the public? Anybody here wish to say anything? No? Okay. Moving on, our next item is for appointments. We have uh, Keith going to talk about the two items, vote to authorize snow and ice deficit spending and also the small bridge program reimbursement request. Keith. Good evening. Um, basically, these last few storms, icing events have, um, have really depleted I thought we were gonna be able to squeak by, but it's um, it's become evident that I'm not gonna be able to make it through with my Winter Roads account. Um, and while we're not in the negative yet, by the time I project out payroll to April, we will be. So um, you might as well, it, it, it's gotta get done at some point in time. Um, so I'm at the moment anticipating it should not exceed 10,000 that I'll be over. Um, I will try to do everything I can to limit that and going forward. Um, so that's that. So I just wanted to let you know because you need to vote to declare an emergency. And the Finance Committee obviously is here. He, he's hearing this too for the first time. So. Um, that being said, the other thing that I have, um, I don't know if you have any other discussions about that. Do we have to declare that emergency win now or wait until it, your action? It's well, your emergency. choice, I guess. I'm, I'm not, if I was at the point where I didn't have any funds available, the accounting department, they can't deficit spend. Okay. But I'm, so I'm not there, but I will be. So it's, there's no way, there's no way to avoid it happening. Yeah, it sounds like if within six weeks that's going to be the case. So at some point in time it will So you want to avoid the drama? Yeah, it's... You know, maybe to, oh, look, yeah, will the government shut down? Yeah. Okay. So I would, I would move to declare a uh, winter storm emergency. Okay, second the motion. Do we have that, that line at what that, his yeah. request is, or is it... Just the emergency, and then he can request whatever he needs. It's to request. just the permission to deficit spend the account. Okay. Whatever. Okay. I'm just giving you a, a yeah. An estimate, right? Your best so estimate best at this estimate. time. Correct. Okay. 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 Any discussion here before we vote? Paul, you have anything to say? No. Better do it. Okay. All those in favor? Yeah. Aye. Okay. Next item. Next item I have is um, reimbursement request. Um, I have. Actually, uh, I'll just bring them forward everywhere. There's a little orange tag. That's where I need the selection to sign. What they are is under our Williamsburg Road Bridge contract, the engineering is moving forward and we are receiving invoices for that. So I am submitting reimbursement to um, somewhere in the $36,000 range in engineering so that I want to stay on top of it. We don't want those to get because we have to pay for it and then get reimbursed. So that's what those are. And the other one that is in that package is a reimbursement request and a final report for Egypt Road for the work that was done this fall on Egypt Road. Um, originally that was estimated at $25,000 and it came in under budget around, I think the, the, somewhere around 24,000 and some change. So um, that's what all, that's what all that paperwork is. So that's like two copies of the same thing, that's the 36. What's that? It looks really good. Easy for I, yeah, I, I will say this much when you look at it now and you're sitting looking towards 5 and 10, it's hard to imagine the road being where it used to be. Yeah, you, you do get 
you know, I was thinking, this, it's funny you, you say that, because I was thinking the exact same thing. I don't know what made me think of it, but I was, you know, I turn on to Swamp Road coming from north. How many times a week? Oh, you know, and it, you think, oh, remember when it was a straight path? Right. And, and you forget yeah. what it looked like and why it was ever like that and turning right and, you know, it, it's so I, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. There's three altogether. You said the 36,000 was the. Uh, there's Bush two Bridge copies Road. of each. Right. There's 36, there's the, the Egypt Road, and then there's one that's uh, 24,000. The 24,000 is Egypt Road. Is Egypt Road as well. It's a, it's a reimbursement request and a final report. Oh. oh, okay, okay. So there's two documents for that same one. Gotcha. And one okay. document for. And Egypt just one Road. document for the. Because really, that's the best thing about this job is you get to sign things, and I wanted to make sure I got everything needed to sign signed. Uh, as we get through, once we start really getting into the, you know, that contract for Williamsburg Road is four hundred ninety-seven thousand um, dollars. When we start really getting into nuts and bolts, I'll have to work with. Brian and, and Lynn to see whether we have enough cash flow to, to swing the, the bills will start getting to be pretty expensive. Are so, you on the I don't know. I, I don't know how quick I can, you know, I'll do reimbursement requests as often as necessary. I just can't answer once they get submitted how fast Mass DOT will turn them around. So I don't know how much. If in it, my experience, that the state turns around, it's reimbursements pretty usually pretty fairly quick. But in my case, what I'm getting at is my case. I usually do not submit reimbursement or get to the point where I'm outlaying two or three or four hundred thousand dollars that the town has to basically be able to yeah. to jockey until they get reimbursed. When I do Chapter 90 money it's usually nothing ever over a hundred thousand dollars at any given time in this case here i'm sure that we're going to be turning in bills that'll be exceeding six digits so see i didn't did not just have any sarcasm in john's voice when he said he turned around fast so i, I assume that means no, it, it's, they it's actually usually there, there has because there. there's not that much i deal with with the state where it turn out really fast right but there has been times Re reimbursements it's as long as you've got your ducks in a row on, in, on the form. They, there has been times though where the state will financially be in a struggle themselves and just leave them stacked up on a desk, so to speak. Okay. And we're not in that situation these okay. days. So. And hopefully that won't happen in the next couple weeks. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Sure. On old business and group health insurance, vote to engage in a process to change health insurance benefits. Brian? Yes, so at the last meeting, we, we, we discussed for uh, a good amount of time the, the options that the town had in terms of uh, group health insurance, and the board voted to continue on with the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust. And because the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust is making plan changes to what they're offering. The town is, by default, making changes to its plans that it's offering its employees. So, yeah. um, when the town when the town has um, employees who are unionized, in this case, Union Thirty Eight, with the schools is unionized, um, it needs to go through a process. Uh, the process laid out in Chapter Thirty Two B, um, and there's a in your packet here. There's a implementation timetable that sets forth the steps that we don't need to go over in detail now, um, but there's two reviews that happen. One's a um, insurance advisory committee review and one's a public employees committee review, neither of which the town currently has, but there's provisions for when towns don't have that. Um, it's really a, 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 it's a negotiation with in this case, it would be Union 38 and a designated retiree over how to um, how to mitigate the um, 
the impact of the proposed changes. So the first step in this process for the town, uh, aside from making that decision as, as to how we were gonna go, was that the select board needs to take a formal vote to engage in the process to change health insurance benefits. We probably should have done that last time. Um, <laughs> we could have, yeah. uh, but okay. it, it, it's really no harm. Okay. Um, so that, that really kicks off the process um, that's required under 32B. So if the board's comfortable, if there's a, also an email in your packet from, from town council, mm -hmm. and there's specific motion language in there, is the one to okay. yeah, so they are right right right. Down. Um, So I'd ask that, that the board make that motion and vote on it, and then we'd also want to discuss as to who would be the, the board's designee through this process. It could be myself or it could be um, one of the board members. I think it would be tricky if we tried to do the whole board and, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. and try to coordinate schedules. Um, I, either way, I think I, I would be heavily involved if I'll somebody say, wants to join me, that's, that would be well, fine I, as well. I, I would then move the town away with the support of selecting to commence the process to change Health insurance benefits under Mass Law, General Laws, Chapter 32B, Sections 21 through 23. Second. Okay. All of us in favor of that? Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. And then I would move to appoint the town administrator to serve as the board's board selectman's designee for purposes of implementing the proposed plan design changes under Section 21 through 23 of Chapter 32B. Second. All of us in favor? Aye. Yeah. Okay. Brian, add to your to do list. Yeah, sorry. That's a big thing on your plate there. It's fun. Oh. I don't know if I really mean that, but. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will it say that we'll have it done. Yes. I, I, I got to tell you, it was the last meeting was tremendous involvement from the town employees, employees that we had. That, that they understood the situation, they understood it stinks all around. And, and and they they were they were great. I, yeah. I was I was I walked in kind of nervous. Was impressive. Yes. Yeah. I was nervous at the beginning, and I was like, wow, that's that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Right, okay. Moving on, town hall project update and discussion. So, um, and Fred, you can. I'll just give a, a really quick summary of, of okay. I think where we are. Fred, you can add anything you want. Okay. Um, in terms of the existing building, demolition is mostly complete except for a few minor items. The first floor is fully framed for the new layout. Um, the walls are the walls are framed. There's been some structural structural repairs to the floor <coughs> joists on the first floor, um, and some new framing required for the the restrooms, uh, the restroom floors. Um, there's still some additional sistering of joists for the second floor um, that are needed. There's some questionable pieces of log that they that they used to, way back when the building was first built. Um, hazardous material abatement is all completed. Windows are off-site being uh, uh, refurbished. That's not the right term, but we'll go with that. Um, so in terms of looking forward, for the existing building itself, it's going to be a big focus on the mechanical elements moving forward now, the HVAC, um, plumbing, and electrical. So um, they're getting close to, to finishing up sort of the structure elements, the bones of the building. Um, in terms of the new addition, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to, to look back there, but it's, it is pretty much, pretty much in place and built. Uh, they poured the slab last week for the floor. They're working on some exterior siding and trim, so the windows are in, the framing's not, it's, the roofing's up. I believe the roofing's up, right? Yeah, they shingled it. No, well, not last week. Not no. last week, okay. It wasn't. Um, so, um, I, I think it's going pretty well. I know we've had some concerns about, um, and I think we could foresee these coming, about access to the post office and um, contractor vehicles. We've asked 
any of the contractors don't need who don't need immediate access to their vehicles to park across the street at the Waitley Inn. Uh, George Joel from Jones was has spoken with the owner of the Waitley Inn. He said he doesn't have an issue with uh, some folks parking over there. Yeah. So hopefully we can just get through the next couple months and um, the, the, the we should send there. we should send a thank you letter to the Waitley Inn. Then yeah. I think. Yeah. that that has come up. Uh, a few months ago when we first started and we alerted the contractor of that and he was aware of our concerns and use of Waitley in lot. I guess the other thing I like to tell people if they're there during the day and there's no room to park, they can always go to the Waitley Inn parking lot, park there and walk over to the post office if they want. There's always that option. Or the other thing is to come after 3.30 contractors there from about 7 in the morning to I think 3.30. So all of their crew is gone at 3.30. So if you don't need mail early in the day or whatever you're doing post office, come later in the day. And this this may increase in the next month or two because there is six subs on the, on the project that haven't been there much until this coming month or two. It's important that they're all going to be there. Could be all at one time. So. Uh, I guess you've got to be patient. The project will be done in May, towards the end of May, early June. So we're talking two or three months, I guess. I just ask everybody to be patient and try to work with the, the traffic situation there. Uh, we can't eliminate all the vehicles out of the parking lot. It won't, it won't happen because they need access. So. But they should be, it should be impressed upon the contractors that yeah. they, if they don't need their vehicle, and I drive back by there a lot, I don't see a constant flow of individuals going from town hall to their to their vehicles, yeah. and and I do think that if and I don't think it's going to be an inconvenience. If someone's going to be inconvenienced, it should be the contractor before the residents of Whaley. I just do. I mean, they're putting up with a lot. They're paying for the thing. People can walk across the street, and and it will be right. no, it will it will not slow down the work day at all. Well, I'd say we've talked about this at least once before, so they're aware of it. So, yeah. The post office is open until 4:45, so if you yeah, wait till 3:30, you've still yeah. got a, an but, hour and a quarter. But sometimes if you people can. can't do that. I know. Right? I know people can't always. Just wanted to, while we're giving times, I thought I put out the time. Yeah. The Plus, we have to give access to the residents of the Smike's house as well. So yeah. uh, that they need to have clear access and egress and ingress for that during the day so they're trying to do that as well so okay do you, do you want to talk about the, where we stand on funding sure um and you know, a lot of credit goes to the uh, the the friends of town hall group they've met their fundraising um, commitment they said that they would raise and donate hundred fifty thousand dollars and they have done so um, the last amount was paid last week this week um, so uh, they've met their goal, and that uh, brings the total amount of funds we have available up to um, $1.44 million. Um, our total obligations currently are $1.39 million and some change. So it leaves us around, well, they left us with around $54,000 in a contingency. About, there's been some change orders, some credits, and some deductions in the amount of um, roughly uh, $9,000. But we also know of a credit that's coming for three. So our contingency right now is, as we sit here today, is probably about forty-eight thousand dollars that we have remaining in the contingency. Most of the building's been opened up, and we know, um, you know, we, we're not we're not anticipating that that would get fully expended. And that contingency is through when? When's the end date expected for con for construction completion date? Um, well, I think they said substantial completion May. End of, end of May and, and then everything so by four, four months of contingency. Right. But the thing that's not included that we haven't authorized the contractor to do is, is the bid alternate one, in it, which is the front parking lot and the sidewalk in front and the uh, sidewalk or ramp coming out the front door towards the post office. That has not been authorized because we don't have money to do that. He submitted a bid higher than what we have funds remaining. Uh, even with, well, the change orders are only going to decrease, not increase the funds remaining. So there will be a meeting with the building committee here in the next several weeks to decide 
uh, if we first if we want to do the front parking lot and uh, how much money we need to ask for it and where that money is going to come from. Uh, What's the bid on that right now? The bid was around 75,000. So, 20, 20 shy. 20 shy, but you're also, but some of this 54 is, you're, you're probably going to. Which is really 48. Yeah. 48 plus. Some of that's going to get enough, I'm sure. Some, yeah. of the, some of that even is going to go lower. So, uh, so there will be a decision made in next month whether we do that part of the project or not. Or do they, when do you make the request for funding? For make the request, part. right, for yeah. funding, right. Okay, any other discussion on down hall? Okay. It looks like the way we end getting ready to, I'm going to guess, you put in a new septic. It looks like they're going to fill that big hole they've got because they just took all the trees out of it. So that might open up some additional parking in the future. Right, after they're done. Where is that? What side of the building? <coughs> the the uh, north, side. north side. Okay, next item is the Wilcox APR. Ryan? So this is, this would be the, the signing of the document for the, the agricultural preservation restriction for um, the Wilcoxes. The, uh, it was $6,500 of CPA funds that were previously approved. So this is just formal, uh, finalizing that. That's 6,500. 6,500. Remind me where on the map it says? Right in my house. Behind your house? Okay. Yep. Thank you. Oh, it's in there. Oh, it's in there. It's in here. I was looking through the wrong pen. Thank you. Yeah. Do we need to make a, take a decision on this? or Do we just make a vote or just sign? Um, no, I, that fail, I feel like we made the decision already. Is that not yeah. correct? That it doesn't hurt to, to make a motion. Okay. Sign. Done. Thank no, you. Joyce, come on now. I move we sign it. Okay. I'll sign. I was in favor of signing it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. New business, Brian. And yes, Brian, I know I still owe you something. Yes, it's true. Yes. These are draft budgets for for your review and discussion. One of them is the Select Board Administration Budget. One of them is Legal Counsel and Financial Advisor. The other one's Town Office Supplies and Town Building Operations. And I just wanted to go over these. We want to go over them in detail or just give you some summaries. Mm -hmm. So the select board administration budget as written would show a $510 increase. Um, there's some, some minor decreases and some increases here, but when it went through the FY17 expenditures, the, the um, dues and meetings and mileage and meeting lines were the ones that were, were over. So shifting some of that money from some of these other items that I think are just left over from um, days gone by um, into those line items to cover uh, those expenses. Other than that, the salaries right now are, are projected the same because the personnel committee, which is going to be on the 21st, yeah. will make determinations about any cost of the adjustment. So not really any significant changes there. I have to ask about the Memorial Day band. Because oh, I know we don't pay them here. 
That's one of their obligations. We buy the uniforms and then show up once a year. But, but I'm told that that is there because the town has been asked to pay for the transportation of the van. Wait, 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 time out. I get that. Yeah. But the transportation, they're driving five miles. Oh, they, they rent the school bus. It look, I mean, Do they actually use a bus? I don't remember. No, like they that, a bus or there's tons uh, of parents around. Well, I, kids. My, my kids have been in the band for all of their years at Frontier. Yeah. Uh, and when it was in Waitley, we just drove them to Waitley. But whenever the band had to go somewhere else, you drop them at Frontier. They get their uniforms, they get their instruments, they load up the bus. Yeah. Uh, some of the instruments actually have to get loaded. Yeah. Uh, and then they drive to whichever town it is they're going for whatever reason. So it tends to be that the band comes to the school, gets their stuff, and goes out. If so you're paying for an hourly rate for a bus driver? A couple hours. I, I just, I don't, I don't see the itemization of it. Yet. But it, 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 but it was like zero in some of these years too. Yeah, but, so. but, but then it's, That's, and again, it's not a lot of money, but still it's 400. Yeah. I mean, it's down to 300 they're saying. So, I mean, I'm not complaining about the amount. I was just curious what it was for. So it's really for transportation. It's not like an extra donation of the music department. Not that that would be a bad thing either. Uh, I'll, I'll follow, yeah, yeah, we'll I, follow up I, on that. I'd be curious to the itemization of, of it because you're, you're paying a driver minimum four hours because that's probably the contract. but. That, so that's a hundred bucks. Yeah. We have the bus. Well, it's, it's not owned by us. It's yeah, owned by but, a, a company. Okay, right. But I, think, I just would be curious. That's all. Yeah. Okay. okay. The legal counsel and financial advisors line item. I think we could knock around. Um, Four thousand five hundred dollars off that. We just in FY seventeen, and even so far in eighteen, we're just we're just not spending close to that amount of money. Um, FY sixteen is, is high because that's when the closing for this building happened. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. doing a lot of stuff going on sixteen. Okay. Yeah. So I think that can come down, and I've also. I've also expanded this, this, this budget, budget item a little bit, um, just in terms of the, the lines here, because uh, in terms of legal and recording fees, a lot of times we'll go and record our own documents. We don't send them to the town council to record them because why well, pay them to do it. Right. Yeah. Um, and and um, financial advisors, in most cases, are just as important as the traditional attorney, so it's good to have flexibility there and for this year it allowed us to pay um, Beth Greenblatt oh. um, who was able to help us tremendously with the pilot yes, yes. huge so, return on that investment yeah, yeah. so okay town office supplies um, these were all combined in FY17 from all the different various um, budgets oh. so this is just the same request as, as the following year so they're all okay. in any type of office supplies that's their purchase. In town building operations, I think we're starting to get a little bit better handle on the demands of this, the <coughs> energy demands of this building. Um, two items here, and there's some, some minor adjustments going on here. But Really, two items that are new here is there's a, a request from Linda Mary Allen to that the town would acquire um, a postage meter instead of um, mm -hmm. instead of ordering um, pre postage, you know, pre printed, pre postage envelopes. Apparently, I guess there's a three cent difference between metered mail and regular mail, is what I was told. And there's some there's some efficiencies to having a postage meter as well and the old one that we have the old envelope sewer we have it told us on it's pretty much on its last legs that makes sense and the backup thing that they have to seal envelopes it's probably made out of horse hair i'm not sure it's, <laughs> it's been it's been there for a while yeah. where is the postage 
uh, charged to today? Um, yeah. The different account, um, the different departments. Of each department has it. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then I'm going to guess you're going to talk about special projects. Yeah, it's something I wanted to, to bring up with, with you guys in terms of what our plans are in terms of trying to do anything with the center school once it becomes unoccupied or the DeMaio property with the blue school. There's going to be some costs associated with trying to, to try to move those properties. And I think it's better to, uh, to have some sort of ability to, to pay for it if it's an appraisal or it's whatever it would be. In the past, I think those items have, have come out of the select board budget um, in the past, and but over the, at least this year and in last year, we're trying to tighten up the department budgets a little bit. But at the same time, we can't, if we tighten them up too much, then there's there's not any ability to deal with special projects. Um, I, I think it falls under the same category of, of, of the return we got on Beth Greenblatt. I mean, if we don't do it, we will not get the revenue that we should out of those yeah. or we'll be taking on risks that are right. not really long-term tenable right. and I just don't know how we pay for things but right I don't see where we pay things for like look like an appraisal or yeah, uh, yeah. well do you think 1500 covers that not to bump the budget but start. I don't I don't know because you, let's assume that DeMeo may or may not happen, but we know that the Blue School is going to be a discussion point. We know that the Center School is going to be. So two of those three pieces that you talked about yeah. are going to come up in FY19. Right. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah, most likely. It does this role. Well, we're, uh, or else you put right. them oh, in the, exactly. legal, the legal yeah. page here. you got legal counsel. Uh, yeah, that's it doesn't kind of fit a, the description really, but, but yeah. Yeah, I, I okay. Okay. I'm not opposed to I'm not opposed to bumping. I mean, I'm not opposed to bumping it up. Yeah. Right. Well for, for, for homes that the average cost is somewhere in the three hundred is four hundred. The high end is four fifty for homes, low end is about two thirty for homes. I know these aren't homes. But the DeMaya property is <coughs> not a heck of a lot there to appraise. So no, we may have to test the, the septic. Test the septic. We may have to test yeah. the existing septic. But for hazardous waste, that's definitely going to be the case. Yes. Yes. Your, your next to an environment protected area. Yeah. Um, no, it's four hundred dollars. And unless you sell it to a for-profit area, then maybe they incur that cost. We could spend this pretty quick if we need yeah. a title. Yeah. If we need to do a title five and an appraisal, we spend half of it. You know, it would probably be a title five at the center school, probably. So that's twelve hundred. It's a dig up, right? No, we really, I forget what we paid for town hall. It was 400 or 800? 400, 400. 400 for town hall. So. But we did the perk, we did the perk test and then Title yeah. 5 as well. So that would be. Can I ask a question about one of the line items? Yeah. And, cause I, and, and maybe Paul can correct me if I'm not remembering other line items that I've seen from emergency management, but it seems like everyone's lowering their electric, electricity line item. Did I miss a memo or something? Are electricity rates going to suddenly drop in the next in the next fiscal year? Because every, it's consistent. Yeah. I always see it going up. I, well, that's sort of my point. But I'm I'm nervous that we're dropping electricity rate line items, and it's a, and it's a line item that you, you can forecast pretty well, with the caveat of you don't know what the rates are going to be, and and I don't see them going down. But it's this is you know you're forecasting a, a ten percent. Drop in, no. No, you're saying the same. Fifteen, fifteen. Oh, no, fifteen. 10. You know, dropping by five hundred. It, it's it's right. lowering by a couple percent. Right. right, but the previous year they they over appropriated by five thousand. I, I get that. So I, it might be that that's just a, because they had bumped it up from the previous year where the appropriation was way not enough to cover it. But that was twenty sixteen, which is a hard year to predict. Right. Um, so they may be over appropriated in 17 and then 18 they kept it there uh, but they're not moving down by 5,000 right no I, I get that so but it just it seems to be a theme across departments. it might be that all the departments have have done that have done a little over yeah I, I just don't want to get caught with their pants down well do you remember two years ago I think before Brian got here somebody slashed 
the electric right across the board. Here. Here. And in every department. And then I think that held, that sort of went to the sub subsequent years. And now they're taking a look at, I think each department head is saying, we've always budgeted a little too much. Okay. I, I just, it, it just, I think. It struck me as curious, that's all. So I just wanted <laughs> elementary to school dropped 8,000. Did it? For their, for their projected. Projected. Yeah. And so, I, I, yeah, it's just something, it's a theme that is worth the question, that's all. I don't, I don't see at least my homeowners is, is changing a whole lot. Yeah, it went up for a month or two, but they had a recent decrease because the state told them you had a, because of the tax the law changes, tax whatever, yeah. tax cut. So they went back down to what it's been all of last year, so. Uh, yeah. Okay, I just, I just wanted to, I just had to ask the question. That's fine. Yeah. One other thing I don't see in here, Brian, I think I've talked to you about it, and I don't, you know where it would fit in and whether you're looking at it here or somewhere else is uh maintenance of the town buildings uh we'll just start the, the easy one is the library hires somebody for i don't know how many hours uh we have the uh highway crew come in here in and out friday or whatever day uh we're gonna have more space over here to worry about maintenance and the town hall once that's open for use somebody's gonna go and maintain it I mean, sweeping the floors, taking out the rubbish, cleaning the bathrooms, all of that. Uh, I think we should be looking at uh, hiring somebody to do that, either a position or a part-time hourly person to do all that for the town. Uh, I, you know, I, before Brian came, Mark was doing a lot of that here. Right. Cleaning the bathrooms, sweeping the floors when the leaves would blow in. and and doing the sidewalks, well, we got winter maintenance on here. Yeah. Billy is doing winter maintenance, but that's outside. I think we need somebody for inside, vacuuming the carpets and, and all that kind of stuff. I don't want to see uh, Brian doing that. <laughs> neither does Brian. No, neither does <laughs> no. Brian or Janet doing that. Like, either. Because, we don't, because, because we're losing, that's an opportunity cost. If Brian's yeah. spending his time sure. doing this instead of mm -hmm. doing whatever else time yeah. administrators do to. Uh, you know, can I, can I just. Uh, okay, go ahead, Paul. A minute, a minute here. We got, Fred, you and I had a, have had a number of discussions about all of the buildings in yeah. town and about upkeep of the buildings right. and having an individual or individuals be responsible for not only the maintenance but um, in, any kind of repairs yeah. downstream. And you would think that would fall into the auspices of the capital planning group but this is the second part of my point is that these guys only meet once a year and we really need to do more to bolster that capital planning team and I don't know give them more breadth of responsibility and and expect more from them in terms of you know, not only the upkeep, but the future of all of the buildings and pro properties that we have in town. Yeah, let me just say that uh, I, I fully agree with what you're, you're saying, Paul, and I've talked to Brian on this some, and uh, yeah, we see there's a need for that committee to do more, and to do more with, with looking at future needs for all these buildings, what we call them maintenance or capital improvements. To look at that, and I think Brian has had some discussions with some of the department heads. Uh, I wanted to do it for this budget cycle, but we got we got too involved with the town hall, the, the meetings on that, and everything. So uh, that's still on our agenda to, to do that. Uh, we'd like to more formalize that committee, get them looking at more than just the one-time meeting a year. Uh, Absolutely. I guess I'd welcome your 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 support for that from the finance committee if you want to help us out help us figure that out and how best to do that to restructure that 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 is still on our agenda we haven't forgot about that so i don't know brian if you wanted to say any more on that or yeah in a discussion that i've had with with the department heads i think there's i think there's frustration on their end as well with the process because it, it it's been at least for the, the you know, last year and then this year it's been kind of this one shot 
people show up one time and yeah. the, the prioritization process isn't what it should be. And there was, you know, there's been talk about whether whether the process can can start in the summer and there can be actual site visits with a committee to the various buildings exactly. and to see the equipment and so that there's that there's just a better understanding of of what the needs are instead yeah. of just this one yeah. shot um yeah so it yeah. sort of needs to be like a get up to speed campaign yeah, yeah. And, and for the for I, the folks yeah i've been trying to look at other other towns in the county here to see what they're doing on that how they're structured and if you know sunderland issued an rfp and it's hired somebody to do that for all their buildings at oh, a very yeah. reasonable cost they're just mm -hmm. starting we haven't seen the end product yet but uh you know if we need to have outside eyes to help prioritize yeah. and really look at a building to see what's going to be needed in the next 10 or 20 years mm -hmm. not just one year but project it out that may be another option uh, but i think that's something we, we we need to discuss yet in the next several months how we're going to proceed with that whether we do it internally or hire somebody to help us or somebody in town that has the expertise to do that that wanted to do it yeah, that's the yeah. other option I, I think it's I think it's a, a, a dual solution. I think having someone with that kind of knowledge and credibility is, is a good idea. But I think the capital planning committee can be incorporated into this process. Meet four times a year. I don't know, just, but once. It's just right. I'm putting together a list, and that's essentially their role. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the list doesn't necessarily have any or enough or enough thought. Right, right, because it's. They get presented with requests by direct by by, by department, department heads, heads. And, and it's the department head's job to go to bat for those things sure. but it's somebody else's job to say wait a second or yes mm -hmm. absolute spot on mm -hmm. and we don't have that that the sort of check and balance you, you right. can't do it, can't do it. Okay. there's no checks and balances to our capital planning process in right. fact when they come to the when the other decisions come to the finance group more often than not, we start to assume the responsibility of the capital group yeah. by asking, by getting the department heads in. Well, you so, so, so. Yeah. right, and you know, so yeah. you're repeating the same thing that was done a week before. Yeah. Redundancy, exactly. Yeah. exactly. So, you know, four so, times a year with, with being able to lean on someone with an understanding, a, 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 a street credibility about them. Yeah. I, I think it's yeah. really important. Because right. our stuff's falling apart, or it's about to, right. and some up. Yeah. Okay. There okay. also seems to be like there's. We started the conversation with leaves coming in the door, yeah. and people who we are paying, you know, too much money to be sweeping up the leaves coming out the door, uh, or people have, you know really have other things that we want them doing rather than sweeping up the leaves. So my and kind of what I was what I was hearing was we kind of need a custodian, right? In a way, right. We need a custodian of our buildings because that's really the first line of defense on maintenance. At least that's the way my employer looks at it. Yeah. You know, the, the custodians are the ones who will notice the things that are broken uh, or coming apart so that you have the information that you, you know, sooner or later. Or they can do a little fix it that sort of doesn't get bigger. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So, but I mean, so sort of hearing this on, on two levels, I don't know that the capital planning committee would be the best place to no, uh, to talk about having a custodian or not. No, no. not for that, but I think But you're right. Yeah, and uh, but it got, like, just a, a, I don't know, and I have no idea how many hours it would take for someone to come through, and and right. just do so, do so, the vacuuming and yeah. Two, got two guys from the highway department come here, and they probably spend maybe a little over an hour. So, uh, our hour a week. Yeah. So that's our plan right now with custodial. Just for this, for this building, building. Right. 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 a couple guys. Yeah. Yeah. Are they really hired for that? Oh. It's no. again, it's opportunity cost. Yeah. Is if they're doing this, they're not doing highway department functions. But is that, is that what they're, they're doing? I know. Of doing trash and I'm not sure what else. And I would argue that their salaries are above that challenge as well. Yeah. You, you don't pay a highway, you, you, you pay a custodian less than you pay a, a, a highway. Yeah. And yeah. we're cleaning kitchens and bathrooms. Right. And, and every and every and every place of business, the employees do 
that they should be maintaining their kitchen and stuff like that. If you have a, if, if, if you make a lunch, yeah, clean up after yourself, do, you know, clean the sink, that kind of thing. That's in every workplace. Yeah, but not scrubbing. But not, but yeah. Not over scrubbing. I mean, clean up after yourself. Right. But no, there's no cleaning. Okay, okay. So I, I guess yeah. I'd like yeah. to make a motion that, that Brian includes something like that, a position either part time or hourly, whatever, for, for this coming budget year put something together for that. For this coming budget? This coming budget year, yes. Otherwise, we're waiting another whole year. Uh, we're gonna have the town, the town hall is gonna be open in June, so, you know, if there's events going on, you're gonna need somebody to go up there to clean. You're gonna have a deal you're doing it all the time? Uh, no, I you can't. Uh, well, and, yeah. and again, yeah. we, we hire someone, we hire someone to come to Hurley Heat twice a week yeah. Yeah. during the months that Hurley Heat is yeah. open. And they, they do the trash, they clean the bathrooms, um, you know, they'll, they'll do whatever we ask. I, I guess ask the, the so library, when they, have, they have a custodian who yeah. does it, and while what their requirements are, I guess, and, and as far as duties they do and the, and the salary range, and, I, and I, I, I could say I've talked to that person and he's willing to to work here for the town, depending on the number of hours. So, and so I'm sure a person in Hurley would be willing. Yeah, to, you'd have to bid it out. But. Right, but there are people out there. I think, say retirees, maybe that, that would be willing to do that for a couple hours a week or day a week or whatever. We did so, go out to bid when we first got the building, a professional outfit. Yeah, and it was just absurd. Right. But we so, did get some when we did the winter maintenance. I think we. You know, we talked to two or three people and we went with the one we have because it was close close by Billy Smith. Oh, was yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was for inside. Inside. Yeah. Oh, for inside. It was just crazy money. So yeah. That's yeah. why it wound up where it wound up. Yeah. Right. You could also talk to neighboring communities that, you know, sharing a, a, a person, you know, they spend X hours a week here, Y hours a week here, and Z hours a week here. Right. We could regionalize custodial <laughs> services. Yes. yes. As you know, yes. I'm all about regional cooperation. So. Uh, well done, we All right. South County, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> South County, clean up after yourself. Okay, so I'd like to make that motion, and Brian, look at that. Does the board agree that? Well, Paul has a comment. No, I mean, just. Once that's done, I, I would just like to see the board take on a restructuring of the Capital Improvement Committee, at least a discussion. Yeah. And somewhere under that umbrella, they have responsibility for town properties in some way, shape, or form. Um, because at this point, no one really, all of the buildings are under the guidance of the department heads. Right. In, Rightfully so. Right. 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 Yeah. And so that's their baby. They're going to push for whatever they can. Right. For that building. Right. Who's got the new town hall? And, Fred. you know, they're kind of floating out there. I understand right. they have some friends. But, <laughs> right. But, you know, but Paul, I think you're right, but I think it might be a hybrid of capital planning and building it committee. Might be. Yeah. Yeah. It could be. Yeah. Yeah. Because the building committee has been swamped, yeah. obviously, with the construction of this place, sure. and it's been busy for since 2011 now. Yeah. But... You know, that's where the expertise, I mean, that group has... Or the kinds of expertise that's that there would need. But if you could incorporate a hybrid of that and capital planning, yeah. because you don't, because then you don't want the building committee to just be a yet another department head going to bat for this. It, it needs to be a a learned organization. Okay. So okay, yeah, we we will address that yeah. in the next. Couple All right, months. so I'll second your okay, motion. Okay, I'll make a motion to Brian look for a custodial help for this coming fiscal year and price it out. Price it out. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. That has to be done quickly because this is going to be discussed by finance. What? Which? Which Tuesday? Yeah. The twenty-seven. I think another yeah. month. Another month from now. Yeah. Twenty-seven. Two weeks. Oh, this week. Oh, two weeks. Oh, two weeks. Check the calendar. No, the twentieth is canceled. The twenty-seven. Yeah. So it's, it's the twenty-seventh, and then the twenty-eighth is select board meeting. So twenty-seventh is combined. The twentieth is the schools. Twentieth got canceled. 
to the 27th. To the 27th, the down. schools. General government. Oh, to let the six. schools be here for the 27th. So you have to the 6th to discuss general government. Yeah. Um, well, we can talk about it offline. Okay. I want to switch one of the things. Okay, uh, Brian. Uh, anything else you want to talk about the budget here? Um, well, I know not all of you have this, so I apologize. But this is I did provide you the report of the. Well, we can keep talking about the capital planning improvement committee, but these are the those are the recommendations from the committee. But we've kind of already talked about those. Right. Well, I'm, it, it, it's funny. We're going to fund virtually all of it now. That's sort of the point of the Capital Planning Committee. We're not, we, you know, the Capital Planning Committee made their priorities. And I'm not taking a position on, but they made their suggestions. Yep. And their suggestions are probably going to be edited, shall we say, at least by finance. Well, they always are. Right, and, but it, right, and it's so it's obviously that's just an example of the system's kind of broken. Or, or a select board, very yeah. yeah. the two last year select board changed a few of them too. So. All right, so it, okay, yeah, okay. Brian, administrator updates. What else you got? I'll keep these brief. All right, because <laughs> we have. One more item to do after this. Um, so the um, the inspection of the sprinkler system at the elementary school is scheduled for Tuesday. That'll be the, the scoping of the, the system, and hopefully we'll get some good news. Um, in terms of Poplar Hill Road, Keith and I met with uh, Roger Mosier from Smith College. I believe he's the new head of facilities or the vice president of facilities, or I have a look at it. Something along those lines. And uh, we talked about the, the legal mess that is the top of Poplar Hill Road in terms of uh, ownership by the college and the town and Mr. Creasy. Um, and I think we've, we've come to an agreement that, that um, at least Smith College and um, Mr. Creasy have, have come to an agreement that, that I think they would like to extend the, the, the right of way up to probably where the gate is, where the parking is of, of Smith College. So there would be some sort of proposal to the board that the, that the, that the town would, um, would the town consider accepting um, the distance from uh, uh, really right in front of Mr. Creasy's property up to the, the, the Smith College gate, because right now it's split ownership and um, it's just a mess right now. Uh, but Mr. Creasy's away till um, early March, so the discussion will pick up after that. Okay. But there, there's some movement there. In terms of the the state historical records advisory board grants, the town submitted two grants. One was for the veterans uh, monument in the center, and one was for a cemetery stone restoration. They, um, we received an award for the veterans monument um, project for okay. the amount of three thousand dollars. How much? It was three thousand um, dollars. And it's a, it's a one to one matching, so the town would, would have to put up the other $3,000. It could, some of it could be in kind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so is there a completion date on using it? Um, there's not a, I mean, typically they like it within 12 months, but. Okay. Um, so, and it was no on the cemetery stone restoration one. Um, part of the letter said that they typically don't fund two projects in one town because they have a very small amount. Um, so that's those are three really the important ones. Okay, uh, one other item I bring out that I've been trying to get a, get a hold of is uh, the library. Library trustees had a, a dedication of one of their rooms to Robert Duda here back in the middle of January. And Mr. Duda gave a considerable donation to the library uh, trust, a, a trust account in the, in the vicinity of $200,000 wow. contributed to the library. And I think it's important to let the people in town know that uh, things like that are happening, uh, that there are people dedicated to helping the town preserve what's in the library. 
uh, there was a ceremony that Sunday afternoon. I was I was there. There was probably 35, 40 people there. I'm guessing they had a small program. Uh, some of his family were there, and they had refreshments. They dedicated the room downstairs to, to Robert Duda. There's a plaque over the, the door. And before you go in, if you're in the library on that floor, first on the ground floor, there's a plaque with his, his picture and a little description of, of his commitments to help on the library and whatever. So I guess if people go to the library, go down there and let's look at the plaque at least. So, uh, But it is a significant donation. I think everybody appreciates that. I'd just like to inform the people that that, uh, that happened. We're trying to get an article. It may appear on the uh, town website. Just tell people that that uh, that did occur. The newspapers were not there, no video, so. But we can. We can get in the school. We can reach out to the, we the get court anyway. Right, we can reach out. But I think uh, when was they this, were when slow. Was it was January, January right after the uh, MMA meeting that Sunday. Oh, was oh, okay. Yeah. So, you know, we tried to get stuff, Janice tried to get stuff from the library trustees. We finally did get something, but, uh, you know, it took a month coming. So, if you want to pursue it for the scoop, I, I guess you, you can yeah. talk to Janet and get some of what I'll they work had, on, so. I can work on getting something in the recorder. That should be, that's an easy one. Yeah, well, then right after they had a, an article, they had some kind of exhibit, or was it the cafe that they opened or something, where they are? The newspapers were there talking about that event, and that was like three days after this dedication ceremony. Yeah. Yeah. And nobody mentioned a word about it, so. <laughs> I, I would just have a conversation with Jim Ross before we do that. Yeah. Before we. Yeah. It might be the, 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 the well, how much publicity does the person want? Yeah, so I would just have a conversation with him before well, we. Jim, I think Quentin Dawson is the chair of the trustees, I think. You know what I mean now. Well, I'm not sure who. I'll, I'll talk to Quentin when I. Yeah. See him Saturday, yeah, you could ask him. But it was, yeah, I think, again, it was a significant event, a significant contribution that right. we should recognize right. that. Person. Yeah, but they're, they're, yeah, they're personally sure. Publicly, yeah. it might depend on how much privacy the person would like to have about it. Well, well, but okay, the privacy's kind of gone now. Going around, but <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, nobody watches this. Yeah, you'd be surprised. I'm shocked. I know. Oh, people watch. I know. It's, it's a positive thing that we can yeah. comment yeah. on. Yeah. It's not costing us any money. All right. Okay. Anybody else have anything else for the agenda? You have an invitation for the Grange Grange night here, March 8th. Oh, Your RSVP right. is, is requested. I must send my regrets. Okay. Uh, but we don't need an answer. This minute. The moment, if so? you could send my regrets. And that's probably like a six to eight something. It's a seven thirty. So. Right I know for the present sheet. I think that's membership awards night. That's that's the same night. I don't know if any of you saw it. The uh, Furcog is having a I guess you call it a seminar on was it vacant and abandoned buildings. Oh. I got a direct from Furcog. I, I assume everybody else is I on your mailing list. Furcog likes you better now. I don't know. I, don't know. I think I sent it to I, Brian. The they, 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 they crossed me off their list once. So. Like <laughs> yeah. Well, regrets on that. Okay. All right. Are we? Well, that didn't, didn't we need sense? to. Well, if you see item eight here, it's executive yeah, session. Yeah, executive session. We could go into executive session quickly. That would be good. Okay. Well, does someone have to formally someone move that? To move that. Uh, I move that we uh, go to executive session per Massachusetts General Law C.30A, section 21A, subsection 3, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation. Uh, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and yeah, the chair. Right. So declares. Do you declare? Yes. So the board uh, will not be returning to open session. Okay, second the motion. Second. 